Hello, this video is going to be on transforming linear functions. Okay, so oops, I am going to, this is 1, 3 in some of my textbooks, some of them it's not, so um, it's 1, 3 in, in um, the main one that I use, but either way it's called transforming linear functions. So this kind of follows everything you did last week with transforming functions in general. Now we're going to be more specific and see, look at like each kind of function and transforming it. So we're going to transform linear ones and I suddenly lost, here it is, okay. So the first thing I want to look at is a translation. Now remember a translation is going to just shift it up, down, left, right, okay? So if I want a horizontal shift, so horizontal shift, what is horizontal, right? It's this side from side to side, right or left. So if you're going to take your line and you're going to move it to the right or the left H units, and that has the um, absolute value symbol on it, then your input values have to change. Okay, so input values. What are inputs? Inputs are your domain, your x values. So you have to start linking these function notation words. So input values are domain, our x values. And it says if you, if, if you want to move um, or h is greater than 0, you move to the right. If it's less than 0, you move to the left. But what's tricky about this is there's a negative in the formula. And you'll see what I mean when I do a couple examples. But the, the idea of this one is your first function you have, you're going to take it and you're going to subtract a number off. If that number's positive, it moves to the right. If it's negative, it moves to the left. But because there's a negative in here, basically, it's the double negative becomes, um, it, it, the, it moves you to the left, or a positive in here moves you to the left, a negative moves you to the right. So it's a little bit tricky. Um, but this is a shift horizontally. And, and this same idea is going to follow into quadratics and all the different things. So again, input values change, okay? X values. Then if we look at a vertical shift, similar, okay, but this one has our output values change. So um, your output values change, changes. K is greater than zero, it moves up. If it's less than zero, it moves down. There's no trick with any negative in the formula. You can just see you take your formula, F, the whole thing, and you add this K value to it. That's going to move you up or down. So this one is in a parenthesis that you put in with the X, whereas this one's added outside. That is a difference, and it does get a little look a little bit different. So those are the translations that we can do with our linear functions. We can also reflect our in our functions across the Y axis, or we can reflect them across the um, X axis. Let me move this up a little so you can see my whole entire definition. Okay, so if I want to reflect I still can't see it. Let's see here. There we go. Excuse me just for a sec. So if I want to reflect my line across the y axis, axis, my input values change. That means your x values change to negative. Here's the notation. f of x is going to go to f of negative x. Basically, you can list all your points, all of those x values got to go to negative. That will then reflect it across the y value, x. You change the x values to reflect it on the y. So kind of the same idea with the um, reflection across the x axis is your output values must change. Okay, so that's your y values. So you'll then notice, remember f of x and y are the same. Function notation is the f of x. I know it's said funny. f parenthesis x is said f of x. And um, that's going to switch to make your y values negative, right? Or your function notation negative. So y values change, excuse me, to negative. So let's look at examples of these four things. I'll leave those handy so I can show you them. What if I have, what if I have the function 
2x plus 3. So there's my function. And my, I want to shift it four units up. That's a translate or translation. So I'm going to four units up. I'm going to be kind of lazy and not write the translation word. But what if I want to shift this? Well, the notation told us if we want to move it up or down, we're adding that number to the entire function. So I'm going to name our new function g of x. f of x is original. g of x is going to be the changed one. And it says you take your function that you started with and you will add 4 to it to move it up. So what does that look like? Well, let's put our function in there. That means I take 2x plus 3 and I add 4 to it. That's it. Combine your like terms and you get 2x plus 7. Now let's graph this and see if it turns out the way we wanted. I think I can fit the graph over here. So the original, here's our x, here's our y. The original is at 3 for the y-intercept, 1, 2, 3. And the slope is 2 or 2 over 1. So you're going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And this is, I don't have a ruler, but I, oh man, I didn't do that very good either. Um, usually I do pretty good straight lines, but not today. Oh well. So there's my original, so I'm going to call that f of x. And then my new one should be shifted 4 units up. So right here I'm at 1, 2, 3. Now I need to be at 7. So um, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's 7. Same slope, so I'm going to go up 2 over 1. So these should be parallel. And this one I'm going to label g of x because that's my new one. And does it look like I took this one, minus my crappy thing, and shifted it up 4 units? It does. Okay, so I added the 4 to everything, or subtracted if you would want it, wanted it to go down. And that's how you're going to make a translation up or down. What if you want to take the function 3x plus 1, and you want to shift it 2 units to the right? Okay, so if we thought about the, the ones that are going to go to the right, this one is the one that, that affects the input values or the x values. You don't add it to the whole thing. You put it in where the x is here. So let's look what this should look like. So we're going to have our new g of x, and it's going to equal, still have your 3 out here, but take out your x value and leave the plus 1. What you insert input, this is into the input, is either x plus or minus, depending on the, if you want to move right or left. Remember, it had a negative in it, so basically if, it, if it's going to go to the right, it will be um, negative. So it's going to be x minus 2 in here. Because the formula had a negative, so to the right, eh, so it's a little tricky. Opposite of what you think. So if you want to go to the right, a positive direction, it'll be a minus. If you want to go to the left, it's going to be a plus. Then you distribute and you can simplify this function. So I'm going to distribute 3 through here and I'm going to get 3x minus 6 plus 1. And then I can 3x um, combine the negative 6 and the 1 and get negative 5. And this is my final g of x formula here. And this one should have moved 2 units to the right. So let's graph it and double check that it did what we want it to do. Um, so the original goes through at 1, and it has a slope of 3. 1, 2, 3, up 3, over 1. So there's our original. And we call the original f of x. I just always call my original f of x and my new one g of x. Just it's easier way to do. Um, so let's go. The other one goes down 1, 2, 3, Four, five. It's got a negative 5 for its y-intercept, up 3 over 1, same slope, up 1, 2, 3 over 1, same slope. Okay, that's not the best. Well, I don't even know if I want that to... 
Oops, let me see. Uh, I'm obviously I probably should use graph paper or a graphing calculator. Can you? Does it look like I moved this two units to the right? Hmm. I was trying to pick like I was thinking. You know, from here, if you look here, you got half a unit, <laughs> whole unit, half a unit. I think that's kind of the the idea, but it does move it two units to the right. Huh. It looked more more better. That was a really good way to say that in my notes. But if I had my graphing calculator, I'd show you on there. But note that change in here for um, moving to the right or left. So let's look at one that we want to reflect. So let's take f of x equals 2x plus 3, which we've already done once, but let's take this, and this time, let's reflect it across the y-axis. So, oops, reflect across y-axis. So what did we change when we reflected across the y-axis? Remember, we changed the x values to be negative. So that's one way to do that is to put in a negative x. I kind of like thinking about points that are on it and switching the points. Like, what are points that are on this? Well, we know 0, put in 0. 0 times 2 is 0, plus 3 is 3. Put in 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So we got 1. 5. Let's put in 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 7. So we put in 2, we get 4, 5, 6, 7 out. Here are points. The new points, so this is f of x, right? This would be g of x or our translation or our, um, I mean our reflection. And we want to change, we're moving to y axis, we want to change all the x values. 0 can't change to negative, but 2 and the 1 can. And we can then graph these and see um, that the graph is a reflection. So that's one way to think of it. I actually find that to be the easiest way. We could have taken the formula f of x oops, and changed it to g of x by putting in a negative x. That would have converted it to negative 2x plus 3. And if you look, these points are on that. 0 times anything is 0 plus 3 is still 3. Negative 1, negative 1 um, times negative 2 is positive 2 plus 3 is 5. Anyway, those ones are going to end up on that as well. So let me grab some paper here to graph that. Let's graph these original points. 0, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 5 would be about here, and 2, 5, 6, 7 would be about here. Here's the original line. Um, and then the new one would be 0, 3, so same point here, negative 1, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, and then negative 2, 7 would be up here. So if you look, this is our new one, g of x, and this one here was our first one, our original, f of x. Does this look like it's a reflection across the y-axis? Here's your y-axis. If you fold it across this y right here, does this new one lie on top of the old one? So here was the old. Does that go right on top of the new if we folded it? Does this one go on top of this one? Yes. Okay, so there's kind of two ways to do that problem. You're, you're changing the x's so you can put the negative x in and, and go that way. Um, I think this, this is, when you reflect the opposite way where you're changing the y values, it's a little harder to, um, you have to put in a negative y. It's a little bit harder to write the formula with. It's easier to do the points. So, but either way, you can still do it that way. Let me see what my other... Um, this is just looking through my examples. 
Okay, there's one other thing I wanted to make sure I showed you that they kind of assume you remember, which um, of course I'm probably going to get 50 emails if I didn't show you because you'll go, I don't remember. Okay, so a lot of the problems would just, this is my fourth example, start with a graph. Like, I don't know, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's my original. It's my f of x here. And it'll say something like reflect this across the x axis. So this is the opposite of the one we just did. We just did the y. We want to reflect it across the x-axis, right? So we want it to fold on the x and, um, and be equal. But it makes you write the equation of the new line. Well, we know we want to just change the y values to be negative. So I'm going to write down these two points that we can easily see. And even if they don't have them labeled, you just write down a couple points that you can easily see. So 0, 5 and negative 6, 0, and this is on our, our original. So what would we do to the new one to reflect it? We would then change our um, y values to be negative. So we'd keep the 0 and change the 5, keep the negative 6. You can't change a 0 to be negative. So um, this would be our new one. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be here. And negative 6, 0 is that same point there. Now, does that look like if I folded it out across this x, that they would the original would then lie on my new one? Yes. Okay, so what beyond that, I have to write the equation for this. So you have to remember how to do that. Well, where it crosses the y, remember it's y equals mx plus b. So where you cross the y is your b. So y equals something x. We crossed it negative 5. What would be the slope would go in front of the x? And you just look at any two points and you go count up and over. So we went up 5, over in the negative direction 6. So my slope would be 5 over negative 6. <coughs> Writing the equation of the line has been taught for in geometry, it's taught in Algebra 1, it's taught in 8th grade. It's something you really need to know um, to be successful in Algebra 2. If you don't remember how to write the line, so then research writing an equation of a line from two points or from a graph. You'll get some amazing videos from maybe the Khan Academy or something like that to help you review how to write the line. Don't make it harder than it is though. B the number where you cross, right? Slope up and over. So if you go positive, positive, positive's up, positive's right, it's a positive slope. If you have to go up and to the left, it's going to be negative. I always start with my lower point so that you get a pattern and you get used to this. So this is how you're going to transform linear functions. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here, and I hope you found it helpful.